the Californians. I'm glad you came over, Devin. Well, I do. Maybe you should get going before Stuart gets home. Devin? What are you doing here? <laughs> Hello, my favorite English language learners. It is your favorite English teacher here, Amy Joy. And oh my God, wasn't that skit from Saturday Night Live like so totally hilarious? I'm just kidding. You know I don't talk like that all the time. But in this video, I'm going to teach you all about the Californian accent from how valley girls talk to chill surfer slang. Let's review all the unique ways that we talk in my home state of California. And I am sure you are already familiar with the valley girl accent. So here are a few ways to achieve that blonde, ditzy stereotype that you see in a lot of Hollywood films and TV shows. One way to sound like a valley girl is by making your vowels longer. For example, instead of just saying, oh my God, you can say, oh my God. <laughs> or instead of saying, I love California, you can say, I love California. Or instead of tacos are the best, you can say tacos are the best. Now by lengthening your vowels, it actually allows you to do the next thing that makes you sound more like a valley girl, which is called creaky voice or vocal fry. And this is when you lower the pitch of your voice and really vibrate your vocal cords. And I just did it in the last example when I said tacos are the best, the best. <laughs> and this is an example of creaky voice. It's that really creaky sound that sounds kind of like a frog or something is dying. It goes, eh. And Kristen Wiig actually did this in the skit that I just showed you when she says, I totally like that. I totally like that. <laughs> Now, a lot of people find creaky voice pretty annoying, especially if you do it a lot. And two queens of creaky voice or vocal fry are Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton. See if you can hear the vocal fry in Paris Hilton's voice when she says, that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. I love that song. Did you hear it? Now, here are some other examples of creaky voice. Oh my God, I can't believe she did that. That that. Can you hear my vocal cords vibrating and really making that creaky voice? Now that was super exaggerated and I don't usually talk like that, but most of the time it will happen on the last few words of your sentence. I think I just did it there too. On the last few words of your sentence. Ah, oh, I do do it. And again, some people find this really annoying and I notice myself doing it more when I am trying to complain or whine. I think because we associate creaky voice a little bit with being kind of annoying, this really achieves the purpose of complaining or whining. So for example, if I'm really hungry, I might tell my husband, babe, I'm so hungry. I wanna eat something, Oh, <laughs> It can be really, really annoying. And I don't think I try to sound like that too much, but I am from California, so who knows? I probably do do this. And again, I think I even just did it there. I do do this. Uh... <laughs> Now, another unique feature of the Californian accent is upspeak, and I did it just there. Upspeak is when you use rising intonation even when you are not asking a question. So for my English language learners, you know oftentimes we use rising intonation when we are asking questions. But upspeak is when you use rising intonation and you are not asking a question. For example, if someone asks me, what are you doing today? I might say, Mm, I'm gonna go to the beach. Now I know what I am doing that day, so I am not asking a question, but I still said my statement like I would say a question or I was uncertain about it. And there has been a lot of research and discussion about using upspeak, especially in the workplace. Women have even been advised not to use upspeak because it does not sound as assertive or in charge. And instead it actually sounds very uncertain and kind of weak. Like in this example, maybe an employee asks their boss, hey, when do we need to finish the proposal? And the boss might say, get it to me by Friday? This sounds like a question or an uncertain request. It sounds like there might be some flexibility in when the proposal is actually due. But in fact, it is a command. And another example of this is when you might go to Starbucks or a coffee shop and they ask you your name, I do this all the time. I say, Amy? Of course I know my name. So it doesn't really make sense for me to use rising intonation when I am making a statement. 
Now, sometimes I do notice myself doing this at the end of a sentence, at the end of a sentence, at the end of a sentence. Now there, I'm just making a statement, but I did use rising intonation. So for my English language learners, this might be something useful for you to know because you might be hearing Californians and you might be thinking that they're asking a question, but really they are just making a statement. Now there are a few more things you can do with your pronunciation to make you sound more like a Californian. But I should mention that these tips actually apply to a majority of Americans and are not distinctly Californian. This is because as people moved west from the east, where there were a variety of accents, there was a blending of accents and language patterns, resulting in a more uniform accent throughout the West. However, these tips do separate us from some other accents, like the New York accent, the Boston accent, the Southern accent, and especially the British accent. And the first one is how we pronounce our T's. And it might actually come as a surprise to you that Californians and even most Americans actually have six different ways of pronouncing the T sound. And the first one is the aspirated or what we call a released T. And it sounds like this. T. And the reason it's called aspirated or released is because we actually release air when we say it. And you can test yourself out right now by going T. You can feel a little puff of air on your hand. And we usually pronounce T this way at the beginning of a word or when T begins a stressed syllable. For example, toy tip or attack. You can really hear that air being released when you pronounce that T. The second T is called the held or unreleased T. And this is when T comes at the end of a word. And in this T, we do not release the air, but rather we constrict the flow of air in our throat and we just kind of hold that sound. For example, bet, cat, short, and doubt. In all of those, I did not say bet, cat, short, doubt. I did not release the T, instead I held it. And I just did it there even in the word it, it, it. And the third way we pronounce our T is actually more of a D sound or what we call a tap or a flap. So instead of saying T, it sounds more like D. If you speak Spanish, this also might sound like an R to you. For example, water, bottle, daughter, shorter, and my personal favorite, totally. By itself, T is voiceless, but when put in between two voiced sounds, it likes to become more similar to them in a process we call assimilation, just because it is a little bit easier to say. And so in these types of words, the T becomes more voiced, which is like a D sound. Then we have T becoming more like a CH sound before a U, like in the words fortune, adventure, temperature, and actually. There are a couple exceptions to this, but I can get into that in another video. Then we have the fifth way of pronouncing T, which is a glottal stop. And it really just sounds like you're kind of holding your breath. For example, in the words Manhattan, button, and forgotten. Notice we're not releasing that T sound and saying T like forgotten. We're just saying forgotten. And then the last way we pronounce T is actually by deleting it altogether. Now, I am not saying that it is a silent letter, but we oftentimes delete T after an N sound in an unstressed syllable. And actually, this phonological rule went viral for being a marker of the Californian accent because of how we delete T in many of our city's names. For example, Sacramento, Monterey, Santa Ana, and Santa Barbara. But what people didn't realize when this was going totally viral is that many Americans do this, and even with words that are not Californian cities. For example, the words 20, disappointed, identify, internet, and to hold someone accountable. And the reason that we delete the T after N is actually because they share the same place of articulation. And by that, I mean that the tongue placement is exactly the same in the sounds T and N. And so when we're talking quickly, it is very easy to just kind of skip over that sound. Disappointed or just disappointed disappointed. Now, when I share this phonological rule, many people get mad at me and say that I am teaching incorrect English, bad English, 
or they say that I'm very uneducated. But actually, this is a very common phenomenon that I see all types of Americans and even politicians and newscasters do. So if you want to sound a little more American or specifically Californian, then you can drop the T after an N in an unstressed syllable. And the last feature of our Californian accent is what we call the rhotic R. That is that very heavy, very strong R sound that sets us apart from more British or Australian English. But it also sets Californians and many other Americans apart from maybe the Boston accent or the New York accent who don't pronounce that R as strongly. So for example, I say bar, daughter, laughter, and sorry. And I really don't want to even try to do a Boston accent. So here's someone else doing the Boston accent. Carter. Cava. Piper. Piper. Harper. Hoffa. Muffler. <laughs> Muffler. Garden. Got it. Notice how their R's sound very different from mine. Instead of saying car, you might hear ka. Now, I don't claim to have a very good Boston accent. That's the best I can do, but you kind of get the idea. So I've just shared with you a couple different ways to sound like a valley girl. And if you do all of these together, that's how you get that really stereotypical valley girl sound. So it's not just one thing, but a combination of several things put together. For example, oh my God, I like totally love tacos. They're the best. You could hear my creaky voice, the way I said totally, and how I lengthened all those vowels to sound a little bit more annoying. And before we move on to vocabulary that makes you sound more Californian, I want to remind you if you're studying for the TOEFL, the IELTS, or just building up your vocabulary, my new ebook, 75 Advanced C1, C2 Level Words, is available on my website now. So after watching this video, go to my website, yourfavoriteenglishteacher.com, and check out my book today to keep improving your English. Now, besides our accent, there are some vocabulary words that can make you sound more like a valley girl, a chill surfer dude, or just overall Californian. And the first one is awesome. Oh, it's awesome, jelly man. Now, I'm not saying that only Californians use this word, but I do think we use it a lot and maybe more than the average American. And in fact, when I had my first teaching observation, the person watching my class gave me feedback after and told me that I said the word awesome too much. Luckily, that was the only critique they gave me. So if I'm a little too positive, then that's okay with me. <laughs> Then another word that some of my students have made fun of me for using, or at least the way I say this word, is the word totally. Sweet. Totally. Now I have to admit, I do say this word all the time, but I think it's because there are so many uses for it. So first of all, the word totally can mean just yes or definitely. It can show you are listening to what the other person is saying and you can use it to add emphasis. So for example, if a friend of mine says, do you wanna to go to In-N-Out? Which by the way, is one of the best burger spots on the West Coast. I can say totally. That means yes or definitely. Did you see what I did? You so totally rock, squirt! But you can also use it to show you are listening. So if my friend says, ugh, I failed my test, I'm so disappointed. Your California friend might say, totally, I'm so sorry. So here, the word totally is used to empathize and show that you are listening to the speaker. Then you can also use it to add emphasis to what you're saying. Again, your friend might say, ugh, I totally failed my test. That means they failed it really bad and they are adding emphasis to how badly they failed. And our third vocabulary word you might already be familiar with is the word dude. dude. And we most commonly use this word as an interjection to show excitement or disappointment. So for example, if two California friends are out surfing, one might say to the other, dude, that wave was totally awesome. In that situation, they're using dude to express excitement and happiness. You rock, dude. But you can also use it the opposite way. For example, dude, I totally failed my test. In that sentence, dude is an interjection to express disappointment. But, but, but dude, how do you know when they're ready? And up next is the adjective sick. And you might be surprised to find out that in a slang or informal way, sick is actually a really good thing. It's used as an adjective to mean really good or super cool. For example, that party was sick or that wave was sick 
or that movie was sick. The party, the wave, and the movie were all really good or super cool. And our next two words are hella and hecka. These two words are used as adverbs to mean the word very. But interestingly, they are only really used in the northern part of California. And actually, I grew up in Southern California, so I did not grow up saying this, but as I moved to college and made a lot of friends who were from Northern California, I started to hear this all the time. So building on our previous sentences, we can say, dude, the party was hella sick, or dude, that wave was hella sick, or that movie was hella sick. Basically, you can just replace the word very with either hella or hecka, and you will sound like you are from Northern California. And then coming back to our valley girl way of talking, I have the word like, but used as a filler word. This is not using the verb to like, and this is not using the word like to mean similar to something, but rather as a filler word similar to um. But people came that like did not RSVP, so I was like totally bugging. But by the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. So if someone asks, what'd you do this weekend? A California friend might say, well, we went to like the beach, then we like got some tacos from the sick taco truck. Here, I'm not using like as a verb or to say something similar. I'm just using it as a filler word while I'm thinking of what I did that weekend. And then lastly, we have some abbreviations that are specific to our geography. And we use these pretty often, both in texting and speaking. So first of course is LA for Los Angeles, but we also say SD for San Diego, OC for Orange County, SB for Santa Barbara, SLO for San Luis Obispo, SF for San Francisco, and then NorCal and SoCal to refer to Northern California and Southern California. So like I mentioned earlier, originally I am from SoCal, but over the years I have moved all the way up to NorCal. And also for example, if your friend asks you, what'd you do this weekend? You might say, well, we went down to SD or we went down to SoCal to catch some sick waves. And then a few other things I want to mention are that I have often heard my students pronounce this word, Yosemite. And this makes perfect sense based on the spelling, but Americans and Californians specifically pronounce this national park Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite. And then my very last tip for sounding more Californian is actually something not to say. And that is to refer to California as Cali. A lot of people in the US refer to California as Cali, but residents of the state actually don't use this abbreviation that much. So it sounds a little bit touristy or like you're not from here if you use that abbreviation. So if you really wanna sound like you're from California, I recommend not saying Cali, but I do know there are a few of you out there that like to call me Cali, and I think that's a really cute nickname, so please don't stop calling me Cali. I actually really like it. <laughs> okay, so like, let me know in the comments. Do you like the California accent? Or do you have like any questions about living here? Let me know, I love sharing my language and culture with you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel so you can keep improving your English with me. And bye from California. I'll see you next time.